The Benjamin Dixon Show is only possible with listener support. Go to www.thebenjamindixonshow.com to register for our blog and join the Progressive Army. I am going to start off with an apology. This is the voice of Van Jones apologizing. The silence of my community (laughs) and for the speech of my profession. Please clap. I'm sorry. I have to stop it there. Today is Friday, December 9th, 2022. Thank you so much for joining me. That is the voice of Van Jones, um, American political commentator. Um, He is an author, a lawyer. He leads foundations and has received donations from Jeff Bezos to the tune of one hundred million dollars. Give it up for Van Jones the $100 million black man who is apologizing to this, not the Jewish people to be certain it was an interest group collection of a subset of Jewish people in an organization designed to get their political agenda accomplished. Now I don't say that to make them sound nefarious, Everybody has an interest group. Okay. So don't let my language betray me. I am not saying that this Jewish group is a secret cabal of X, Y, and Z, which is so popular these days. This is why Kanye West fits so well with Alex Jones. No. Van Jones was speaking to an interest group. And as a $100 million Negro, he decided to apologize on behalf of, of his people and his profession, or did I hear it wrong? Let's listen in very closely to Van Jones's own words provided by Michael Harriet. When we were hit as a black community with appalling anti-black bigotry and racism that the whole world saw on a video. He's speaking of George Floyd, the protests. We expected and insisted that everyone stand and roar back against that hatred. Mm-hmm. And people did. Yes. By the tens of millions, people marched in a pandemic. Okay. By the tens of millions, non-black people. That's right. To say we will not accept this sort of racism, this sort of violence, this sort of hatred Mm -hmm. on this planet. People marched by the millions. That's right. A lot of people turned out. And yet, as this wave of hatred has been building against your community, Mm -hmm. we have rationalized over and over and over again responding not with a roar but often with barely a squeak and sometimes a shrug okay hang on hang on i i have to stop there i was with him i was with van jones up until this point because sure enough in the summer of 2020 more people turned out and stayed vigilantly on protest for a longer period of time than in the history of this country in order to protest on behalf of George Floyd. Okay. Yes. I'm with you, Van Jones. It was a, it was a diverse coalition. You know, the only people who didn't show up, the Glenn Greenwalds of the world, he didn't show up. You know, I was friends with Glenn, Glenn, good friends with Glenn, at least at least via the Internet, as much as you can be via the Internet and how much you can know a person via the Internet. But when he started making this rightward shift, I knew him well enough to reach out to him and get him on the phone. Anyway, I digress. That's a whole nother conversation in the context of what's going on here, though. Everybody showed up. Except 
you know, the Glenn Greenwalds of the world in order to protest on behalf of George Floyd. Yes. And amen. Uh, uh, Van Jones, I was with you, but now you've turned the corner very subtly in the same tone of voice, but it was a vicious turn. Look at what he does to black people. As a result, we now have the shock to you, the pain to you, and the humiliation to us of having an African-American icon praising Hitler and Nazis. And we act like we don't know where the hatred came from. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, my guy. You this where did this hatred come from? First of all, I don't give in to the notion that there is hatred from the black community towards Jewish people. Your your language so subtly conveys that. So I reject that premise to begin with. But then you go one step further, Van Jones, and you lay at the feet of the entirety of the black community. (laughs) Kanye West and some perceived or some feigned. Feigned idea that black people didn't show up for Jewish people. Not only in terms of Kanye West, did we show up? Man, I'm the one who did got the video out showing him going through the airport. It came from right wing watch to be sure. Right. They're the ones who ultimately did the work and put it out there. But man, I chopped and screw that video and put a beat behind it and made sure everyone could get brought to their attention that Kanye West is now in league with Nazis. I don't know where you've I been. I want to say very clearly. When it was a drip, we did not turn it off. Mm -hmm. And now it is a flood. And I want to say to you, I apologize for the silence of my community. (laughs) The silence is over. And I want to say to Kanye, who I know, yay, nay. What? Yay, nay. Yay, nay. Wait a minute. Uncoordinated step. It's one thing to step and fetch, but it's also another to step and fetch and be uncoordinated, Carlson. It's not unusual to be loved by anyone. You are out there, not only, but see, it's worse than this because look, this is not something that the Jewish community is even asking from him. Do you notice they barely wanted to clap until he started, you know, yay, nay, yay, nay. Yay, nay, yay, nine, yay. Well, I, I'm not quite sure the exact message you're trying to convey there. You just found two words that rhymed. And like the most, anyway, I'm not going to give a, 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 a literary analysis of his speech. I need to look at it through the lens of propaganda. Unnecessary propaganda because the Jewish community is not asking for it. In fact, the person who got the word out about Van Jones's betrayal See, he's trying to say black folks betrayed Jewish America or Jewish people in general when this is ultimately you betraying black America, my brother. Oh, Ben, is it that dramatic? Well, let's go one step further. And this is brought to us by Rebecca Azor on the morning show yesterday. She's the one who brought it to my attention because I I, I kind of missed it. I didn't get this dot connected until she pointed it out. That they made, what's a, what's the man named Cornblow, the 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 Jewish journalist who got this out originally, and said that he's the one who tweeted it out that Van Jones apologized to this federation, this interest group. I'll get their name. The name is is not as important as the placeholder. There are interest groups all across this country in every single category that you can imagine. In front of which people like Van Jones go out and do their dances. Their routines. And in this routine, he felt like, wow, this is a great opportunity because I get to speak up on behalf of black people. And so he contrives in his mind, in his imagination. That black folks didn't stand up. My guy, 
Black folks have been sounding the alarm about Kanye West since you you were still kissing Kanye West's ass. I mean, I'm sure privately, you know, I'm sure publicly you were smart enough not to say anything, but Kanye West was still in favor with most of America, most of the richest people in America. And you most certainly know you all you you go to these wine and dine events yourself, Van Jones. You're as much a part of the rich establishment. And I know you've crossed paths. And I'm certain when you cross paths with Kanye West, you kissed his ass. OK. Yay, nay, nay, nine. So here's this guy, this black man, this 100 million dollar black man who has money from Jeff Bezos, his foundation, like it's all legit, it's all legal. There's no criminality there. Good job on that, by the way. But I'm mighty afraid. What are you going to do with it? Are you I mean, really, folks, let's consider this. If he's got one hundred million dollars, do you think that and you listen to what he's saying in that clip and how he's created this fantasy that does not exist? He's created this silence, this imagined silence from black people with regard to Kanye West. And then he alludes to something much more insidious in the black community. Listen, I want to say very clearly when it was a drip, we did not turn it off. And now it is a flood. And I want to say to you, I apologize for the silence of my community. The silence is over. And I want to say to <laughs> the silence is over the silence. I want to apologize for the silence of my community. And now it is official, ladies and gentlemen of the Jewish community. The silence is over. Why is the silence over in the mind of Van Jones? The only possible conclusion we can draw is that he believes the silence is over because he has spoken. Van Jones stood there as the un unanointed and unappointed figurehead leader of the black community in his own mind, because I doubt Van Jones can go even like. Who even know Van Jones in the black community outside the political commentariat? For real. So I don't know how he can self ordain himself to be the official spokesperson for black folks in America. That's one thing. People do that all the time, right? Everybody's everybody's jockeying for who's going to be what. But this clown goes one step further than the rest of our common egos. This clown says. It is over. The silence is officially over because he has spoken. I want to say to Kanye, who I know, yay, nay. Yay, yeah, nay. Yeah. <laughs> so there it is. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, hush, hush. Do me a favor. Let's cut that off. Huh. Excellent fade. Excellent fade there. Um, I told you he knew Kanye. He said, he said, Kanye, who I know. So did you call Kanye in private? Back when you had such a kosher relationship with him. Pun obviously intended. Did you call him when he said that slavery was a choice? Or were you still kissing up to him? I got to remember, um, you know, I, I've got kids listening. I'm sorry. When you were kissing up to him. Because I do really want to just say you've been kissing his ass all this time. And because instead of you being a real brother and approaching him back then, when he was only thing he was doing was attacking black people. <laughs> that's it. You who are the official spokesperson for all Negro dim. Hmm. Enough to apologize to the UJA Federation of New York. It's a philanthropic organization dedicated to connecting various groups in order to strengthen Jewish communities. Sounds like a fine organization, but they weren't asking for your apology on behalf of black people. Van Jones, you, you concocted that out of whole cloth, out of thin air. You just pulled down this mystical or were you playing into a stereotype 
that is regularly used to divide black people and Jewish people. Who have historically worked together against this white supremacist order. Now, put a pin on Van Jones because he's while he's important, he's not the bigger picture. You see, there is a reason they had to divide black and Jewish people, because if you consider what it really means to be willing to die together during the civil rights movement in order to stop or rather to begin, because it didn't stop the physical oppression that black people experience in this country. It merely began the process of integration. We have to distinguish between the two, right? We are still underneath the same police state that was present during the civil rights movement that was present in Jim Crow because they still gun us down every single day in this country. And they've gotten so cavalier with it that they're killing white folks the same way now or they're approaching it. They're not there yet. White folks, they're not. The police state isn't quite killing you as frequently and as um, a matter of percentage points as much as they're killing black folks. But boy, oh boy, have they gotten really good at killing white folks and getting away with it, too. But I digress. The point is, is that what it takes for two people, three people, Cheney, Goodman, Schwerner, those three boys, one black, two Jewish, to be willing to fight together all the way to dying together. That is a level of brotherhood and solidarity that was enough to shake this empire to its core. So maybe we shouldn't spend so much time stomping on the bald forehead of Van Jones. I salute you, my bald brother. But that's about all we have in common at this point. I... I absolutely have to go one step further with this conversation because there is a definitive reason they want to divide black and Jewish people. Now, this is not to say that every Jewish person on the, in the history of this country has been good to black people, nor the reverse. There's not as though we don't have unfinished questions and we have to tend to There's There's always going to be a disconnect on a tribal level. Right. So. But that has not stopped us in the past from unifying in order to fight back against these fascists. Okay. Because we had black folks fighting in World War II as well. Right. We had the best of our boys out there on the front line. The Tuskegee Airmen in the air. We've contributed to the liberation of the World War II Holocaust that was real Kanye West. The problem is, is that, yes, there has been a thread in the black community, but it is present in every community. And it is not, it is not, the, nothing that is germane only to blackness, Van Jones. And you feel like you're so qualified to go in there and apologize on behalf of black people when you don't even understand the entire picture of what we're dealing with because you believe that this is a game as well. Because you dress up with them, you go wine and dine with them, you're on Wall Street with them, you're at your own CNN with them. They, they, you're so comfortable with this empire that you get to get on television and weep in front of all of these Caucasians. Okay? You have a luxury experience in the United States of America. And so for you, this is a career. And this is a game because that's the only thing I can think of that would twist a black man's mind enough in order to contrive a sin. Against the entire tribe, black man. 
you just you just suggested that the entire tribe of black people, descendants of slaves, are guilty and you are here as our redeemer. Well, I guess the black Jesus complex shows up in a whole lot of places. Kanye West has it. He thinks he's black Jesus. Well, I mean, but you two are black messiahs that the feds didn't come and kill like Fred Hampton. I don't want to go too far down that road. Van Jones, you strike up something in me that's a little bit primitive. You do more than make me itch. You know, I break out into hives when I get around that kind of Negro. But this is a level of arrogance that has blinded you, my brother, to the fact that you are playing into the exact, exact language and the exact rhetoric that is necessary to further the divide. And where did this divide come from? Because that's what you kind of said in this thing. You said, like, we never got to the core of why this 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 drip that you were talking about. Let's play it again. I want to say very clearly. When it was a drip, we did not turn it off. And now it is a flood. <laughs> what is the drip? I know that you painstakingly, painstakingly and meticulously wrote this speech, Van Jones. So to what do you refer here? Are you referring to a hatred that you perceive? Such that we would be silent. Am I putting words in your mouth there? Or you, you, I think you need to clarify that for us. So that we don't have to assume that you are alluding to. Anti-Semitism in the black community. Without having the knowledge of how that has been put here strategically to divide us by white supremacists. I mean, maybe you were trying to be deep there, but all I heard was an apology for something we didn't do. Go to www.patreon.com forward slash the BPD show and get twice the content and unfiltered interviews without any of the commercial interruptions. And here we go. A very special welcome to all of our newest patrons. Shout out to Kelly K. Thank you so much for becoming a patron. Jessica M. Thank you so much for becoming a patron. And thanks to everyone who sent cash apps. BPD 2018. We can't do this show without you. Oh, wait a minute. Be sure to be in the place tonight at the patron party. We are celebrating DJ exclusives 44th, 45th. I, I don't know how old he is, but we're going to party. He'll let us know tonight. Make sure you go to patreon.com for slash like it or not or patreon.com for slash the BPD show patron party tonight. And we'll see you there. Welcome back to The Benjamin Dixon Show. Visit us online at TheBenjaminDixonShow.com Yeah. 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 Okay. Welcome back, everybody. I apologize for the theatrics today. Not really. Kind of just reminding myself of, of what the show used to be like. Uh, the pandemic kind of disrupted a whole lot. Um, and not just the pandemic, just different things that I, I want to pause real quick. I, I can't go too much further without acknowledging that Brittany Griner is on her way home. Ladies and gentlemen, non-gender conforming individuals, give it up. I need an applause track. I think I'll put one right there. That's right. Brittany Griner is on her way home. And to be honest with you. There are a lot of angry people today. There are a lot of, I don't know, I don't understand it. Here's an American, an Olympian, no less. They made movies about Olympian athletes being taken hostage. You know, here's Brittany Griner because of a vape pen. Like, oh my God, 
she was doing some weed. <laughs> Stay away from the weed, man. Stephen A. Smith. But there are people who are upset because Brittany Griner is home or on her way home. They want her to do time here in the United States for a vape pen. How unnecessarily cruel, but how strange. Here is an American hero, Olympian athlete. Or is it because she's black? And she's a woman. And she's gay. That these people want her to go to jail. Some black men. Some black men are literally out here saying. Not I mean, clearly not all of us because I'm a black man. But when I saw black men suggesting that she should go to jail here in the United States. And I'm like, how sway? You don't got the answers. Anyway, (laughs) it really surprises me. It blows me away that there are black men who would see one of our sisters being held captive by Vladimir Putin. And the only thing you could say when she gets back home from that, what, what is it? Almost a full year. How long has it been going on a year? 10 months, 10 months of a struggle to get back home. And when she gets here, You've got black men joining with MAGA Republicans saying she should go to jail. White conservatives. I'm not going to stay on black men too hard. White conservatives who scream red, white, and blue. Who act, you know, who bleed red, white, and blue. They act like they are the greatest examples of patriots. Well, is this woman not a patriot? An Olympian athlete champion? being held by Vladimir Putin. But I guess because you guys are on the side of Vladimir Putin now. That's the difference. These white boys have gone so far in their confederacy and their clansmanship and their white supremacy that their white supremacy now requires that they betray the United States and be in league with Vladimir Putin. Jackson Hinkle. Nick Fuentes. Oh, there's the overlap. Somewhere there is an alliance that is made between petulant men children like Kanye West on his matching royal blue date with Nick Fuentes, a white nationalist who hates black people so much that he refers to us with the hard E.R., when he raps Kanye West songs, here's Kanye West out on a flying this boy out because this boy can't get on. This boy can't get on a plane. He's on the no fly list because America recognizes him as a terrorist threat of a of a severe enough risk to put him on a no fly list. But Kanye West gets a matching blue hoodie and flies him on a private jet. And whenever Nick Fuentes says the N word in Kanye West song, it's with the hard ER. But I digress. That overlap is that you are always going to have some men who will find camaraderie even with the lowest of our enemies. Kanye literally sitting at the table with the very people from which we have to declare our liberation. Those are the same people who are upset today because Brittany Griner has been set free. They want her to serve time here in the United States. And I happen to see in comment sections all over the, all over the Twitter full of people, black men who agree with these white supremacists who instead of celebrating, celebrating a a black Olympian athlete who was held hostage as a prisoner by Vladimir Putin during wartime, instead of celebrating her return, they wanted her to suffer in Russia. Because on the white hand side of the equation, they were saying, ha, I bet you think America's great now. What is it that you're saying in your heart, black man? 
who portrays black women like that. Van Jones. I'm almost out of time here, folks. Oh, I am out of time. I'll finish my conversation about Van Jones for patrons only. How about that? Capitalist after all. Patreon.com forward slash the BPD show. Patrons, stay tuned. We're going to do a full 30 minutes today because I got to talk about this betrayal by another black man, Van Jones. Okay, patrons, let's keep going. Because I just want to speak it. Uh, I, I miss, I really genuinely miss being able to be in the space that I am in right now. Right? It's been a very different year for me. And it's been a challenging year. But all I could tell you is that I'm a lot stronger because of it. And now I'm able to get back into this space that you know, I'd all, I'd forgotten about. There was a space in the podcast. There was a space in the podcast where, man, I would just open up and just let, just, just go with the flow and just say whatever came to my mind. And then I recognized that in doing that, there was always a very clear message at the end. We were work. That was some magic we had back in the day when it was just a podcast. I'm going to get back to Van Jones, but I want to pause. But there's some magic that I do with Rebecca Azor. Um, just the two of us. Like we, we have we have the ability to do some magic. And we, we really did some yesterday morning. So I hope that you guys can um, continue to make space for the crew that we put together. Now, we've been down and we've been out. Um, we've had some setbacks. But the crew is still here. I talked with Brother Mac last week extensively. Love that, brother. He's got he's got 10 Christmas trees up, everybody. (laughs) Dr. Carl Mack has 10 Christmas trees up in his house. I mean, if there's any ever a place I want to go and have Christmas is going to be a brother Mack's house. I am a Christmas junkie. Love Christmas. Um, So I just spoke with him in Georgia Ford. I saw her in our in our group thread. Um, We're all still around, but we've had to we had to throttle down to a stasis kind of mode where we were doing the very minimum we could to maintain everything that we wanted to maintain. And then on top of all that, I got this new, you know, thing that I have to do in my life, which is going city to city as time and opportunity and, and affordability affords me. Um, I do it on my own dime or actually I should say our dime, the patron family. But I've been able to go to help fight for justice on the ground level. um, Organize with black churches across the South and put them on high alert about Christian nationalism. And we're not done with that work yet. There's a lot more work to do. (sighs) But I miss this space, the podcast space, where We were able to explore the depths of these issues with a level of freedom that honestly gave way to truth. What we do on this podcast, particularly with this patron space, is that we go further into the nuances of truth beyond political implications, beyond spiritual implications. Beyond our own ego. Because in order to get to some of these truths, I don't know if you've been able, you, most of you, 99% of you haven't able, been able to see the entire arc of what has been happening around here. But, you know, at times there was chaotic moves and all of a sudden we had a morning show. But we hammered out and you guys gave us space enough to hammer out the ability in that morning show to find our own pedagogy of truth. And now we have conversations and it doesn't matter what format. It could be me. Y'all know when I'm me by myself, you do what we do here. And we're going to finish talking about Van Jones in a minute. But but you always allowed for a segue. And that segue always, you know, if properly connected, painted a bigger picture. Every time, every time. 
And I haven't been able to do this rhetorically, politically, as a matter of journalism and content creation. I haven't been able to do this in a long time. Some of that time was because I was hammering out the morning show because I knew there was something there. You can't tell me I'm wrong. You can't tell me I'm wrong. Our morning show is going to be the top rated morning show in this country because we know how to dissect the dilemmas of our politics and our day. And we know how to laugh our butts off. Y'all made that possible. Some of you have been here literally through the entire transition. Thank you. Some of you were here when it was just the Benjamin Dixon show. The YouTube version when I was about 100 pounds heavier. (laughs) Those were great days. Some of you have been patrons since then. Thank you. But to all of you who are here, I want you to recognize that. We've been able to create something magical. In the church, we'll say it's anointed. (laughs) And um, it took us on some journeys. And in on those journeys, in the in that process, I've learned that sometimes there's a price you gotta pay for truth. Right? Okay. But then there's other times. When you've created a problem for yourself, I'm segueing here. Because I can, you know, let's do more of that. I want to talk more to you tonight at the patron party. If you really want to have more of that conversation. Let's continue it. Let's continue it at the patron party. I will be in the same seat, the same chair, the same lighting. Um, It'll just be at a different time. And we'll continue talking about this journey because some of you have been with us since the beginning. And I thank you. And I want to continue to thank you. But then there's times where we create our own problem because the pride in us. Demands that we steal the limelight in a moment Because, well, the light is there to be grabbed, isn't it, Van Jones? You had an opportunity to create and do two things, because one of the things that's most important, we got to understand who he was talking to, not as a matter of what the function that they do, because this organization sounds like a fine organization, right? I don't know much about them other than what I read in a couple of articles. Sounds cool, guys. They're interest groups, a interest group. (laughs) I can't get it right. An interest group. There we go. And we have political consultants. Van Jones is of the political consultant class. And he understands that that's where the money exists. These interest groups have obscene amounts of dollars because they're able to take money from small donors. Yes, but they're also able to receive money from billionaires. And that's what gives them the ability to do what they do. To lobby. This is a lobbying organization. In its own in its own way. It's an interest group organization in its own way. It may not be directly on the official federal paperwork, but I guarantee you the intention of their action and their organizing is to get their interest taken care of. Okay, so there's nothing nefarious about that. So why? Why then? And this one doesn't have anything to do with the other, but I need to understand through the context of the lens of Van Jones. Right. There's nothing about this organization that required Van Jones to come there and do that. This is what I'm saying. There is literally nothing about this organization that required Van Jones to come there and make an apology. Nothing. There was no offense for which he needed to apologize on behalf of black people because we've been sounding the alarm on death con. Yay. Three, whatever level he said he was at. We've been sounding the alarm on him for a long time. I've got videos back years at the same time. Van Jones was smoozing and dining with Kanye because that's his boy. He can name drop him. And so there's literally no offense except this general assumption, this general, this, 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 this blood in the water, this underlying, this underlying tension 
that currently does exist between the black and the Jewish community. But have we taken a second to take a step back and wonder where that came from in the first place when our boys were so deep, 10 toes deep with each other that they were willing to die together in Mississippi? You saw the movie Mississippi Burning. That was about the three boys, two Jewish boys and a black man who died together because our causes have historically been linked. And if you were a ruling empire of white supremacy, of white nationalist, Christian nationalism supremacy, wouldn't you want to divide the two brothers who were capable of bringing down their Western chauvinist order? Of course, you would always want to make sure that black people and Jewish people were at odds. Because historically, we've been willing to die together. So pray tell, Van Jones, what hatred were you alluding to? What drip? What was the drip? Was it even hatred? Maybe you defined it somewhere else. I know that you are a smart, brilliant brother. I know that you spent a lot of time meticulously crafting this speech. So I know you have a very clear definition of what you meant right there. And I think it's time for you to step up and explain to black people because you had the unmitigated gall, the audacity to get up and self ordain yourself as the official spokesperson of blackness such that you were able to apologize on our behalf. And to commemorate yourself by saying, now, I am the official spokesperson. The silence is over. And I want to say very clearly, when it was a drip, we did not turn it off. And now it is a flood. And I want to say to you, I apologize for the silence of my community. The silence is over. And I want to say to Kanye, who I know, yay, nay. Yay, nay. Hmm. Okay, black man. Okay. Okay. And then you lied about it. Van Jones. See, Van Jones has a lot of money. And that matters. You know why it matters? Because he's now able to craft a portion of this country in his own image. In his vision. I'm not saying he's some kind of psychopath, sociopath or anything like that. No cult leader. I'm not trying to, you know. No. He has the ability to cast a vision with $100 million in terms of how he plans on making America better. So he's going to be able to shape this country. Good on him. I'm glad that he has that ability because in general, I would say he's an ally. Oh, I know I've talked bad about him. But he shouldn't have made up a lie and then apologize for a lie in order to ordain himself as the authority of blackness. In general, I consider him an ally. Okay. In terms of progressive politics, I consider him an ally. He runs. I'm not worried about these organizations because I'm quite sure I was never going to get an invitation to them anyway. But they're good organizations. Generally speaking, I haven't seen the books and I haven't audited any of them. So they don't have my final seal of approval. But in general, I consider Van Jones an ally. So if I see him. There will be a quick question about how you think you could apologize on behalf of a lie that you concocted in order to ordain yourself as the leader of blackness. And then as soon as he answers that, we can get back to the party. That's how I go. You know what I mean? It's not like we're going to be out here and fighting each other. Uh, you know, when I see them, see, this is, this is the difference between black folks and white folks. I've noticed that when white folks get mad at each other, they will never speak again. <laughs> like, like if you get politically upset with somebody in politics here, oh my God, you guys, you guys write them off. Like, I can't believe you spoke to that person. They took a dark money donation from somebody back in 1962. And you speaking with them. Now I've mixed the dates up. That's more recently that people are taking dark money. But anyway, all right, let's take a quick break. Come back. I got more for the patrons. We'll be back right after this. <laughs> all 
All right, all right, all right, patrons. Again, tonight, make sure you're there. DJ exclusive. It is his birthday, and I can't thank this brother enough. Y'all, this brother has held down that patron party space through every change I done gone through over the last two years. You know, at first I I kind of, a, you know, I'm, I'm not going to indict myself right here on air and there's no need for that. <laughs> but um, there there was a time where I just simply could not come because of extenuating circumstances in life. And there they were. But it just felt good to know that the family was still partying. Every other week, patron party, there's one tonight. Get there. And celebrate DJ Exclusive's birthday. Come on, y'all. Turn up. And if you can't come because, you know, some of you guys are still young and popping, you could go out and <laughs> you could get to go out and just be you and, and be free and not worry about the pandemic. Ah. <laughs> Send DJ Exclusive a cash app. Um, cash app D D J X dollar sign DJ X three C. OK. Now. Brittany Griner. She's on her way home and I am still significantly appalled by the number of people who want this black woman to go to jail here in the United States for something that we wouldn't even send people here in the United States for jail to jail for. And the fact that she's a, an Olympian athlete, it really just blows me away that they're not having a ticker tape parade for her. And the only reason, because if she was just a woman, a white woman, man, I got to move this music. There's some music coming up. I got to move. I need a little bit of time to please help. Stay with me. Stay with me. It's, I, I want to dig into this. I had to move some music out the way. I'm my own DJ. The only thing I can come up with as to why this person who otherwise would be celebrated and have movies written about her or, 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 or shot about her is because, well, she's not a white woman. Now, there's a lot of white women that these white men hate. So this is not to say that white women don't experience hate. But the wholesale rejection of the Olympian prisoner of war during wartime narrative that would be an Oscar award winning is Oscar the right one, an Academy award winning movie narrative about patriotism and chivalry and saving our woman who has been taken hostage by all, you know, throwing a little bit of patriarchy to boot but no, they reject this wholesale and they go one step further and say they want to go to jail. I'm sorry if it was a white woman who complied with America, then most certainly they would have sent in SEAL Team 6 to recover her. Hyperbolically speaking, of course. I'm learning the value of those interruptions. It's okay to get an interruption and that you can choose your next destination in a conversation. Interruptions are okay. Now I've learned to not be that interruption. Um, that's one of the things that I had to learn doing the morning show or, or as we were creating the morning show. And I don't, I honestly don't know where I'm going with this one. So here we go. <laughs> I have no idea. God's honest truth. So now I haven't done this in a long time. I have not just trusted myself to speak without it being a um, something rooted in my experience, my education, my knowledge base, right? I speak freely, but I speak freely from years and years and years and years and years and years and years, and years of study and preparation, right? To the point where like, I just, I know too much. It's time, I don't even want to read it. The reason I don't want to read another book, Kanye West, is because I read too many, okay? We are not the same. You are not so smart because you refuse to read books. <laughs> like, this is where we are in the world. This is where we are in America. I know everybody's rejecting Kanye, but that level of stupidity 
is generally what is best practices for the Republican Party. The type of ignorance that gets out there and say, I reject knowledge. I reject books. I reject history. I reject obtaining and acquiring new information. And that's what makes me smart. I knew I forgot something with the Van Jones conversation. That level of ignorant thinking exists in every single community. There is there is a delusion amongst us, a contagion, if you would. And that is our propensity. There's something in us and there's something in infecting humanity where people think the rejection of knowledge is what is what's woke. Right. Conservatives version of wokeness is the ignorance enough to reject information, to reject knowledge, to reject truth. And so we have that same contagion, that same thing that affects the entire Republican Party, all the conservatism. This is how you go from a Barry Goldwater, who I find, as I was reading, his arguments didn't really hold up. But at least he was making cogent intellectual arguments. This is how you go from Barry Goldwater down to Marjorie Taylor Greene. Okay, (laughs) Right. This is how you go from Abraham Lincoln to Donald Trump. It's because over time. They have rejected a level of intelligence that was required. Or rather, the reason they rejected it is because that level of intelligence required truth that was inconvenient for them. Period. And that's what happens. That's how the the contagion gets you. As soon as you come across an inconvenient truth, an uncomfortable truth, something that that makes you cringe because, you know, you're the wrong one. Well, the best way for you to never experience that is to just completely reject that level of truth. And that small contagion that is very, I I think that might just be a fundamental reality of reality. We turn away from information that makes us uncomfortable. That's just what we do. And I say we here not to water down the offense that's coming from the ignorance, the the mind numbingly ignorance, uh, the the staggering stupidity, the Neanderthalic type of thinking that has permeated to the top of the conservative movement. This is not to draw an equivalence by any means. This is just to confess that had we not looked at ourselves and been introspective, we ourselves would have fallen prey to the very thing that they have fallen prey to, especially When you throw in bigotry. Now, here's where we do have an opportunity to intersect with the Neanderthal class, the Republicans, the conservatives, the dim witted people who are pushing us towards extinction because they would rather ignore scientific consensus that clearly shows that we are on the road towards catastrophic climate disaster. We're not the same as those Neanderthals. But if we don't watch out for the bigotry that exists in every single human on the face of the planet and don't recognize that the bigotry in us provides us every opportunity to end up looking as stupid as Kanye West did walking hand in hand, not literally, but in matching blue hoodies with white supremacist extraordinaire Nick Fuentes and then for Kanye West nobody ever checked his ego do you know how egotistical you gotta be to jump on stage and steal the the glamour you know this is this is like when when he did that with Taylor Swift and he did it on behalf of Beyonce that was cringe do you know how arrogant you have to be to believe that you yourself have the right to stand up there and say, no, America, you got it wrong. This should have gone to Beyonce. What kind of arrogance exists where a man would feel that he himself alone has the authority to tell all of white America, (laughs) this big old empire and all of Hollywood, and all of the music world, enough to interrupt Taylor Swift's dream moment. I personally don't give a damn about any of that stuff. (laughs) 
I thought it was kind of, you know, I'm a jack, but at the end of the day, it was certainly cringe. But my God, to be willing to to inject yourself into a conversation, nobody was even looking for Kanye to stand up there and say anything, Van Jones. Right? Nobody had any, Kanye West could have just sat down. Right? He didn't have to go up there and make a moment where he would say, I'm sorry, uh, I don't mean to interrupt or I'm going to let you finish. That's what he said. I'm going to let you finish. And he took the microphone from Taylor Swift and, and made his speech about Beyonce. He, nobody was expecting him to do that, but he did it voluntarily. Imagine that, Van Jones. Inserting yourself into a conversation <laughs> needlessly. Well, there you go. Didn't expect it to be that easy uh, first time out the gate. So what happens is I've recognized that I could be talking. It's a dialectic. Let me just skip to the chase. We're out of time. That's a dialectic right there. Real time. It's cool as hell. And we see that now at the very core of Kanye West and Van Jones operates the same le level of egotism, of ego. The feeling, while they are very different variables, and I'm no way saying that what actually strike that. In terms of offense, what Van Jones did to black people is as offensive as what Kanye West did to Taylor Swift and what Kanye West is currently doing to Jewish people. Because he has given into the hands of white supremacy the very weapon they need to continue to divide. What did the colonizers always do? Ladies and gentlemen, non-gender conforming individuals, what did the colonizers always do when they went into another land that they wanted to conquer? What's the first thing they did? They did. They divided the tribes. They divided the tribes. And what does this Van Jones do? Not only does he make up a lie about black silence because nobody was silent. Maybe you were silent. Maybe you're guilty because you're so busy kissing the but kissing up to Kanye West, maybe you're so busy doing that that you forgot to condemn him when Kanye started talking about our ancestors, saying that they were not brave enough to actually fight against slavery. When in every instance of every plantation, there was some type of rebellion, which is why they did everything they could to break us. Van Jones. But you inserted yourself into the national conversation on behalf of a lie that you concocted in your head in order to self ordain and appoint yourself to be the official spokesperson of blackness such that you could say the silence is over. Hmm. Good job, Negro. See y'all at the patron party tonight. Patreon.com forward slash the BPD show. Uh patreon.com forward slash like it or not if you watch the morning show you can send a cash app bpd 2018 and if not i'll see the rest of you on monday <laughs>